Imagine the following scenario. It is 11.59 a.m. and in about one minute the submission window for the exam will close. Which means that about 250 students will have, hopefully, submitted their exams. Now what does that mean for you? It means for you the next seven days will be exam marking time. You will end up most likely with square eyes for looking at the screen, probably repetitive strain uh, injury, and uh, you will seriously question your existence. Why on earth am I doing that? We've all been there, done it, didn't even get a t-shirt for that. It's one of the most stressful times of the year, at least for me. Now, picture the following scenario. It is 11.59 a.m. and in about one minute the submission window for the exam will finish. Which means that about 250 students, hopefully, will have submitted your exams. And this means for you that you probably are going to spend some lovely time with friends in the pub this afternoon. Tomorrow you can take the kids to the beach and the day after you will start tackling this massive gardening project that has been waiting for such a long time. And why can you do that? Because you know that you do not have to mark a single exam script, let alone write reams and reams of feedback that nobody is going to read anyway. How does that sound to you? Science fiction? I can tell you how it sounds, how it feels, because I experienced it this year, not just once, but twice. My name is Peter Klapper from the School of Biosciences at the University of Kent and in this video I will tell you how I managed to reclaim my summer with something absolutely fantastic which is called R exams. But before I tell you how this works actually, here is uh, what I want my exam papers to look like. I teach lots of problem solving skills, numeracy skills in a bioscience context. How to make up a solution, how to analyze data, how to get enzyme parameters from experimental data. And I want my exam papers to actually reflect how I teach and what I teach. And I like this particular, this sort of setup here, where the questions are embedded into a wider context. So for example here the students have to analyze some data, have to do some calculations and then do a little bit of interpretation. They have to tell me which statistical test and then tell me actually what these data mean. This is an authentic paper. Uh, this format is actually called embedded question or close question spelled with a Z and I really like this format. Um, uh, I would not have any problems setting these exam papers in a pre-pandemic scenario. But you see, you immediately spot the problem with a paper like that if you want to set that in a post-pandemic scenario where exams are predominantly online. The problem that this paper poses is that there is only a single answer here. So is a single value for that. And okay, here is a p-value. Again, it's a single value. Uh, my colleagues from maths and physics told me that on average it will take about an hour to hour and a half before the more or less correct answers to this paper will be available to students for an extortionate amount of money to download from some websites. So this kind of exam really encourages 
uh, collusion and cheating. And not just, you know, SMLs and people who do the exams for you, but students talk to each other, believe it or not. They might not talk in the lecture to you, but they talk to each other. And very often we don't know about that. We are blissfully unaware, but they do. So answers like these single answers here will spread like wildfire, whether they are correct or not. So what can we do in order to prevent this spread of the putatively correct answer? Well, one solution could be that we just provide not only one test paper, but several papers. Same question, but different numbers in here, which then lead to different outcomes here. And probably the p-value will be different and the result might be different. So we could provide one, two, three, four, maybe five papers. And then the numbers are different and the collusion is no longer so easy. However, it's a little bit like programming. You fix one bug and you end up with uh, a handful of more bugs that you created. Because you can also imagine that the problem with that is if you've got several exam papers, you need to keep track of which exam paper has been done by whom. Now you could ask the students to put the uh, exam paper number on their answer sheet. So uh, A, B, C, D, E. Uh, and that would allow you to keep track of the paper. However, from my experience, I can tell you this is really uh, hit and miss. Okay, scratch that. It is more miss than hit. Very often the students don't put down the exam paper or got the wrong one. And you are sitting there with a pile of exam papers where you think, well, actually the numbers don't make sense. I have no idea what paper the student did. So you've created an additional problem. Even worse, you create another problem because you don't have to produce just one answer key for this particular question. So where you check the, the answer it should be 470.75 millimolar plus or minus. You have to prepare one, two, three, four, five answer papers, answer keys, actually. And then you have to cross-reference them. Now, sounds pretty complicated and is, but maybe there is a solution provided by technology. Maybe we can ask our friend and colleague, Dr. Moodle, because Moodle can do a lot of really amazing things. So, for example, Moodle can set up exactly this question type. It's actually called embedded or closed question in Moodle. So Moodle can do this question type. That's great. And Moodle can also generate random numbers in questions. So that would exactly be what we are looking for. Fantastic. Problem solved. Actually, no, it's not. Because if you look at what Moodle can do, it can do the random numbers. It's called calculated. It can do the embedded answers, the closed questions, but it can't do both at the same time. It's not possible. And by Jove, I have trolled through uh, forums, uh, Stack Overflow for several weeks. I've tried to come up with a solution and no, there is no solution. Um, people suggested write a Moodle plugin yourself, but I don't speak PHP, so that was a no starter. Eventually somebody in my desperation helped me out and said, um, we haven't tried it, but there is something called R exams. And maybe this might be the solution to your problem. So, of course, I had a look. What is R exams? And uh, it is set up by uh, my colleague Achim Zeileis from the University of Innsbruck. And it's just an absolutely fantastic thing. So a big shout out to, to Professor Achim Zeileis. This is a lifesaver. So it is 
exactly what it says on the tin. It's a flexible generation of e-learning exams in R. Okay, so we have to learn R. What is R? Well, most people know it as a programming language and uh, which is also widely used for statistical analysis. And I would say there is not a single statistical uh, problem that R has not been applied to or can uh, solve. Only recently I discovered that uh, you can do much more with R, you can create art and you can even write uh, books. And uh, my suspicion is that if you dig deep enough, you will find that you can uh, polish the furniture with R and also that it cures cancer. Now, what do you need to do in order to make this R exam, which is a package in R, to, to work? Actually, it's not terribly complicated, but you have to stick to some kind of syntax. So you would write the file, the question file for this for example, exam paper, and that is actually the question file for the exam paper. And there is a little bit of syntax to learn because everything is written in R Markdown. Um, but it's not terribly complicated. So you start here with a question. You put in a question. There's a little bit of HTML, but it's uh, not terribly difficult. So that's the entire question file. You provide an answer list and uh, this can be calculated answer. You can write a model answer and you have to provide some meta information and you say uh, you want this close type. Now the randomization of the numbers comes actually from the R chunks in this uh, code. So here is an R chunk with a little bit of uh, calculation and programming. Here's another one. And again, it's not terribly complicated, but you have to learn uh, the programming language. And there is uh, undoubtedly some kind of um, learning curve involved. But once you've got it, it's uh, really uh, good fun to play with it. So this is followed by a second file here. And this file, that does all the heavy lifting. So in this file, just three lines, you specify how many exam papers you want. Because what happens is that this file actually runs this previous R Markdown file as often as you like. So in this case, 50 times. It generates a part, a one exam paper at a time with fixed numbers, but these numbers are variable. Uh, so you have basically 50 times the same paper with different numbers. It then puts these 50 exam papers into uh, one file together and converts it into an XML file, which is readable by Moodle. And this 50, you can vary. You can say you just want 10 papers or you can want, want to have 100 papers. It doesn't matter. Uh, because these XML files are not very large. And with this XML file, you then can import it into the Moodle format and into a question bank. So here would be a question bank for this section. Now I have split my exam into three uh, of these sections, part A, B and C, and each one has 50. So one paper consists uh, of part A, part B and part C. And you can figure out the uh, number of permutations. So you've got 50 times 50 times 50 permutations, which gives you 125,000 different combinations of exam papers. It's rather unlikely that two students have the same paper. So what this, what does a question like this then look like in when it is com coming to an exam? So here is a typical question. So here you've got your numbers and I have asked the program to fill in the correct numbers. So here for this data set, it would be 555.45. You can define some tolerance here. 
and you find that the p-value is 0 0.0025, which means that we would reject the null hypothesis and we would say that the drug actually has an effect. So that is one paper. Now, the next paper would, for example, look like that. And you see the numbers have changed. Here, the correct answer has changed. And here the p-value has changed. It's now 0 0.064, which is larger than the significance level. And therefore we would say we do not reject the null hypothesis. And we would say that the drug actually does not have uh, a significant um, effect on the metabolite. So we can generate with this R exam a plethora of exam papers that are all different in terms of the numbers but still have the same question type. And with this neat little tool with this R exams package, which is freely available from, I think it is uh, CRAN, where the repository for R is, um, you can generate beautiful exam papers that do exactly what they are supposed to do. They do actually look at the learning outcomes on a more or less individual basis for the student and significantly, and I would say significantly, reduce the opportunity for students to collude or, or well, I don't want to use the word cheat. So this is a great package and uh, I would uh, very much encourage people to give it a go and play around with it. I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.